How's it going, everybody? I'm Brandon with Electrical Specialist, and on today's episode of Ask Your Local Electrician, we're going to be continuing digging in the mailbag and answering some questions. Um, today, we're going to be focusing on a question that comes up a lot, and it wouldn't be a good month if we didn't get a couple of these calls. Uh, the question is, why are my lights flickering? So let's kind of dive into that and take it piece by piece, because there's many answers to this. Uh, it's kind of a very intricate thing so we want to take it slow and find out one thing at a time as we move in so have you ever been sitting on your couch watching tv and out of the corner of your eye you just see something obviously you don't pay much attention to it but it continues kind of get your attention maybe a little annoying then you actually see it flickering this could be just one light in the hallway one light in the living room or kitchen or it could be the whole house at the same time Either way, it's a nuisance. You definitely want it fixed. Um, all flickering lights are bad connections. Fire, those are fire hazards, obviously. Loose connections draw heat. So we definitely want to address them sooner than later. So let's get a little further into that. So we want to talk about, you know, we is it the one light or is it all the lights? So we're going to start with just the single light, okay? We're going to call it an isolated, uh, isolated point. Um, isolated location, how about that? So just one area, this could be when you turn your exhaust fan on in the bathroom, the vanity light flickers, seems to go on and off real fast. This could be a chandelier in your kitchen that when you turn on the dimmer or whatnot, it maybe comes on a little slow or flickers as it comes on. Um, we're just talking about the one location, obviously. Let's start with the low hanging fruit and that's gonna be the bulbs, okay? Obviously, if it's a chandelier with 20 bulbs, we know it's not just one bulb making the bad connection. These aren't Christmas lights. These are isolated to single bulbs and one bulb won't make them all go off, at least in most of the ones that we've messed with. So let's first of all, check the bulb. It definitely could be a bad bulb, especially with LED bulbs these days. I think people aren't used to how they kind of start going out. Uh, the old incandescents, Besides just breaking them, and there's broken glass, and we know they don't work, uh, they would just kind of go out all together, and you'd know they were out. Maybe they'd get real dim. LED, LEDs, a light-emitting diode, can do a lot of things. So let's first just try changing that bulb. You'd think I wouldn't have to say this. It seems obvious, but uh, we do go out quite a bit to fix a flickering light. It ends up just being a bad bulb. So check that out first. The next thing we want to get into is uh, at the end of the bulb, you know, most of you have seen this is a regular LED bulb. We have this clamshell base here. It goes into, for the, for the sake of simplicity here, we're just going to use a single bulb holder, a keyless light. This is actually a keyed light, but obviously we know there's threads in here that match these threads. A lot of times what happens is we may over tighten this bulb when we put it in, be very careful. You really only need to put it in far enough to where the light comes on and maybe just another quarter turn tops. A lot of times people, you know, they're trying to be do it right and be safe. They'll snug it in too far. Well, let's look at something here. Inside that, there's a pin. See that copper looking pin in there? That pin can get crushed back. That actually makes contact with the base of the bulb here and that's actually what turns it on. So if that pin gets crushed in too far, you just can't make the connection and sometimes it flickers. Um, I would suggest being careful, but you can take a screwdriver or a hook, make sure the switch is off, or if you have one of these handy non-contact voltage testers, you could put it in here and see if it's on. Once it's off, you can kind of get in there and pry that pin out. Yes, if it's an older light, they have a tendency to snap off, but hey, it wasn't working anyway, no loss, right? So bulb, base, check those first, and then we can move on to the switch. Now, a lot of times as a switch goes out, a switch is just like any other device or anything in your house. It gets a lot of usage every day. We'll walk, especially high traffic ones in the kitchen, entryway, they get a lot of usage. These items came out a long time ago. They're very simple. There's literally just a spring in here moving from contact to contact. Uh, they do wear out. Now, as these, the spring gets loose, 
and kind of, you know, expands, it just doesn't make a good connection. And you start noticing it either altogether won't work or it may flicker. Um, there's many things it can do to let you know that maybe it's a bad connection. A few things you can try is slowly turn it on and slowly turn it off. And if there's a bunch of, uh, you know, action from the light, instead of just an on and an off, it's probably a bad switch. You can also wiggle it side to side. A lot of times that'll let you know if the parts have come loose inside. As if you wiggle it and the light comes on and off and does funny things, probably the switch. Another old electrician's trick, whether it's a loose wire in the box, a loose wire on the back, or a bad switch, if you knock on the wall around the switch, that connection will vibrate, the light will do something, and you'll know, hey, I've isolated, the problem is right here. Whether it's a wire in the box or a switch, it's in that switch box. Another item that comes up when we're talking about the switch is dimmer switches. These new dimmer switches and the new LED bulbs, I know I say new, they're probably 10 years old, but if you have an old dimmer switch, especially the rotary ones where you turn the knob, they're not always compatible with the new LED bulb. And they may work at first or half work or come on dim. And you, as you slowly turn the knob, it doesn't dim like it's supposed to. And you're thinking, hey, what's going on here? It literally just may not be compatible. And sometimes they flicker and flash and strobe like you're at a dance hall. So if you're seeing any of that, you probably need to update your dimmer switch to a new LED dimmer switch. On that note, now that there's so many switches and so many bulbs, each manufacturer has a different frequency on the bulb and a different frequency on the switch. So you need to make sure the switch you buy is compatible with the bulbs you buy. I know that sounds like a big task, but it's really not. It'll say on the side how many volts it uses or the frequency, and you can match them up. Typically, if you buy an LED dimmer and have an LED bulb, 90% of the time they're gonna work, but don't be surprised if every now and then with different brands, they just don't work right. You need to match them, make sure that they go together and they're compatible. Now let's move on to the big one, multiple locations. We could be talking about, you know, the one in the kitchen and the one in the living room and the one in the bathroom. They do it, but you know, maybe not the rest of the house or the entire house does it at the same time or flickers individually. If we're talking about multiple locations or the entire house, it's a different issue altogether. Here's where we're gonna get a little bit dangerous so if you feel adventurous if you're handy if you feel comfortable with electrical this is where you're going to use that to get into this but i have to say please be careful this is only for people who feel comfortable with electrical components and know a little bit about it if you feel uncomfortable at all please do not attempt this this is just something for those who have a little bit of knowledge and are comfortable getting into it so we're going to look at the panel. We're going to look at the source. Usually if the whole house is flickering, we have a source problem. So as it comes out of the panel or wherever the source is, that's what we want to look at. So we have an example here for you today. Now this is an outdoor panel, but it does the job that we're talking about. You want to carefully remove the screws around the cover. Actually, before you do that, let's shut that main off, right? Let's make sure everything's shut off. Get a trusty headlamp, a flashlight, whatever you've got, a floodlight, let's just kill everything to limit any kind of danger, okay? Once you got it shut off, take the screws out around the cover, take the cover off, it'll expose the bus bar, the main, the breakers, the wiring. Now, now you should know, and I don't want you to do this unless you know this, the only thing that's gonna be hot at this point are the main lugs, the wire coming from the meter to feed the main breaker. So be aware that should be the only thing that's hot. Again, I highly encourage, we call them tick testers. Uh, they're also called non-contact voltage testers. They make funny, cool noises. You put it in here. This bus, this is called the bus bar, should be dead. This is what powers your breakers. These should all be dead. But to test to make sure, the lugs that feed the main should be hot. So be very careful and stay away from that. That's what we're not gonna touch today. So now after you've isolated that, what you're gonna do is go around, and I do suggest I use gloves to limit any more problems from happening. I suggest you put on your gloves. 
and we're gonna go around to every wire and we're gonna give them a gentle tug. Now, a lot of times from a previous video, you can watch on this, um, these wires do get loose over time, especially if you have a 30 or 40 year old panel, the expansion and contraction, these wires get hot and cold, they do come loose and this causes a lot of these issues. So you're just gonna go around, gently tug on these. If one pops out, that's okay, that's actually good. You found a problem. So put it back in there, snug it down. You don't wanna over tighten these, just tighten them to snug and a little past. Uh, when we come in, we actually do on our evaluation, um, we do a full system evaluation, we do a tune up, we actually come in with uh, and torque them with actually a torque wrench to a certain specified code rated torque. But for today's uh, uses, I'm gonna use what's called a square driver. You can also use a flathead. This is something really only electricians use because these things are actually square head. So what I want you to do after you've gone around and checked all your connections by tugging on the wire, you're just gonna go around and snug them up. So you're gonna go in there, make sure it's tight, and then go just a little bit more, like a quarter turn. Same thing with your breakers. Get in there, it's tight, quarter turn more, you're good. So obviously be careful doing that, but after you've checked them all, that pretty much makes sure that if you had any loose connections in the panel, they're now fixed. Let's put this guy down. Now let's talk about if it's not fixed, if you've done that, you turn your power back on after the cover's on, of course, you still have flickering lights throughout the house. And I know you might be saying, Brandon, they only flicker, you know, once a week, once a night, you'll have to be patient, maybe even keep a log and write down when it happens. That's very helpful for us when we're diagnosing the issue. Um, one thing you can do, if you've already checked in the panel, maybe you've got a trusty meter that you've checked to make sure you've got right voltages, call Evergy, or that's our local provider, call your local power provider who you pay your electrical bill to, tell them that you've got flickering lights like you do and you would like them to come test at your meter location. Uh, you're not allowed, at least in our area, to pull your meter and I highly suggest you don't, that's live unbreakered loads, uh, that's very dangerous. So they will typically for free come out, pull your meter, check your connections at your meter. Sometimes the problem's there you'll never find it yourself. So that's another thing to do after you've diagnosed it or had someone look at it. Um, if that isn't the fix and you still got flickering lights, it's probably a loose connection in a switch box, maybe a loose connection in a switch, in a plug. It could be a ceiling fan. It could be anywhere that comes out of the home run, out of the wire and branches off to the rest of it. You may have a loose connection in the attic and the basement. Uh, maybe you've got a rodent issue that they've started chewing on wires. Maybe you've got a house pet that likes to chew on wires and maybe, you know, we've seen all kinds of things. Uh, we've also seen in a remodel, say they're doing the kitchen, they shoot some nails or drive some screws while they're hanging new cabinets, go in there and hit a wire. You never know. Sometimes it just nicks it and causes a problem and doesn't trip the breaker. Uh, maybe there's a staple too tight when they wired your house and they stapled all the wire down. Sometimes over the years that gets tighter and tighter. It actually, you know, kind of hurts that wire. So there's so many things that can happen. But if you're at this level and you checked everything you could check, I would definitely recommend calling a licensed professional. At this point, it's going to save you lots of valuable time uh, than chasing it out yourself, which you may never find it. So one more item I want to cover on this. We get calls a lot and, and they say, um, Brandon, when my AC kicks on, your condenser outside, all the lights in the house dim. It's really annoying. I agree. It is very annoying. It also happens to me. It happens to most people. Um, when large motors like that kick on, they draw up to six times the amount of the full running load when they're just running. So there's a large amp draw when it comes on, and that's kind of a shock to the system. So since all the neutrals are connected and, and the panel is kind of the heartbeat of the whole thing, the whole system takes a jolt when that kicks on. It's normal. What I would highly suggest is getting a whole house surge protector installed in the panel because it is taking some life out of your appliances as it does that. They're not made for that. We're finding out these days it is killing, you know, the circuit board in your furnace, the garage door opener, stuff like that, your TVs. I would suggest, especially if you're having that large load draw, to put a surge protection device in, 
to take care of that. At least you can rest easy knowing it's not hurting your expensive appliances. I've hoped I've answered your question today. If not, please reach out. You can find us on YouTube, Facebook. You can also go to our uh, website at eSpecialist.pro and find everything you need there.